that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is with them. Through this Holy Eucharist we celebrate. Make us worthy to sit at his table in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation. 
The readings this Sunday call us to listen to the Word of God that makes clear the new law of God. Rooted in the Hebrew Scriptures and confirmed in these readings, the commandment that matters most is to love God and to love one another. There is no need for ritual sacrifice, but instead we are called to carefully make God's love the center of our lives. As we consider this and as we consider how we have separated ourselves from this center of love uh, through our own acts of sinfulness, let us confess these sins at this time to God. Please say with me now the second form of the Wikipedia. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I do absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, O Lord, are dear, and all your commands are permanent. Of old I know from your decrees that you have established them forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
as we observe your commandments of love, may we experience your presence as we come before you in praise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the second. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Excellent teacher, you are right in saying he is the one. There is no other than he. Yes, to love him with all our heart, with all our thoughts, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves is worth more than any burnt offering or sacrifice. Jesus approved the insight of this answer and told him, You are not far from the reign of God. And no one had the courage to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. Now, this is important to understand. Beginning with Aaron, when God told Moses and Aaron to lead the Hebrew people, and he told Aaron that he would be the first high priest, and that priests of Aaron's line, of Aaron's lineage, would be the priests that would offer sacrifice for the Hebrew people for all of their uh, period of existence, then it became clear that those who would be offering sacrifice to the, for the people in the name of the people would be themselves of the people and by virtue of being part of that group, they were also sinful themselves. Aaron was sinful even as the first high priest, just as Moses was sinful. Remember, Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land 
because he had sinned against the Lord uh, during uh, the, during the uh, uh, moment when uh, the, the entire striking of the rock sequence, giving uh, water to the uh, to the Hebrew people, because Moses grew angry with them and did it not in a manner that God called him to do. Hence, he sinned against God. Aaron was the same. Aaron was the one, if you remember, who fashioned the golden calf while Moses was up on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. The people convinced him to do that. Aaron was sinful. And all of the priests from Aaron on down were sinful because they were human and they were, they were not sinless. There's only one individual who uh, came into the world sinless, and that was Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ, when he entered into the world, he entered, and he, 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 his Father being God the Father, and entered into the world and was the love of God coming into the world. And this sinless one offered himself, his very own self, up in sacrifice, as a sinless sacrifice to God the Father to atone for all of the sins of all of the people, not only the Hebrew people, but all of the people of all time. And this is important because among the Hebrew uh, people, it was understood that on the Day of Atonement, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies and he would sprinkle the blood of animals in that Holy of Holies and then he would uh, take uh, he would take a part portion of that blood, offer it up, lay it, lay it down on a uh, on, on a goat, on a kid, and then send that goat into the wilderness, uh, where it would leave uh, die probably to the elements. But with that goat would go all the sins that was understood of the Hebrew people, and that was a yearly atonement offering that priests who were sinful themselves offered up until Jesus came. And once Jesus came, he offered up a, sin, a sinless offering himself, and he offered it up once and for all. It didn't have to be done year after year. It was done once for all because God's Son, God's perfect and loving Son, gave himself in sacrifice for all people for all time. And it says further in the second letter to the Hebrews, it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of his, the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself when he offered himself. When we look to the first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy, we are told, or the, Moses tells the people and tells us, fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have a long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them. All the statutes and all the rules, all the laws that Moses passed down uh, to the people, they were supposed to observe because Moses was passing these laws on to them from God. But it was clear because of their sinful nature that they couldn't, they couldn't keep all the laws. And Jesus even spoke to that in his ministry saying that it was impossible for people to keep, keep all of the laws. And that was why he had to offer himself as a perfect sacrifice so that the obedience to those laws would, would, be, uh, would be taken up in his own offering, his own sacrificial death on the cross. And so Jesus did this for us. We are no longer obligated to fo follow all of the laws. Therefore, for example, we are not obligated to fulfill the dietary laws that were established for the Hebrew people. Jewish people today, those who are more kosher, 
those who, those who are conservative, they tend to follow, or orthodox, they tend to follow the dietary laws, but not all do and not all are required because of Jesus' offering up of himself. And in fact, when Jesus himself in the gospel is questioned about, the, about this following of the laws, the, the scribe says, the, uh, poses the question to, them, to him in this way, which is the first of all the commandments? And then Jesus says, love your God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then he goes on, everything is wrapped up in this, everything. And the teacher agrees, the scribe agrees and says, everything indeed is, is uh, wrapped up there. And he says, to love him, God, with all our heart, with all our thoughts, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves is worth more than any burnt offering or sacrifice. So this, this, this situation, if you will, the form of worshiping God changed in Jesus. No longer were we to offer up burnt offerings and sacrifices of animals and, and of bread, of birds, uh, uh, water. We were, off, we were to offer Jesus ourselves by loving him and loving others as we would have them love ourselves. The two commandments, the two great commandments of love, they were brought down to, to us by God's love, Jesus himself, and we're simply called to carry those out. And it's a message that would be, the world would be so much better if we would only take those two commandments of love to heart and follow them in our daily lives. And we can start doing that today. Just because we haven't done that up to now, thus it doesn't mean that this isn't a good day to start. So I would challenge all of you, as Christian men and women, to begin this day, to take seriously the commandments of love that God has given us, to love Him with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we place love of God first, then love of neighbor will naturally come. Because if we love God first, then Jesus Christ is first in our lives. And who did Jesus come to earth for, if not for us, his neighbors? And so the example Jesus sets for us is Love one another as I have loved you. It's a very simple and a direct message, but how much better the world would be if we would all follow that message. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us rise and let us together proclaim the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten, not made, of one being of the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy church. Amen. Lord our God, accept these gifts of your bounty which we bring to you. By the power of your Spirit, may these holy mysteries sanctify us in this life and lead us to eternal joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice of Christ and praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, my brother bishops, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone. We remember especially Frank and Ann Kiprowski, Ronald Kiprowski, and Janice Krokmal Kane. We also remember June Marshall, who died this and was, uh, was buried this week. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with St. Wolfgang of Regensburg, your bishop, whose memory we keep today, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us.
May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you all. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table.
possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food, and may the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Let your kindness come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. So shall I have answer for those who reproach me, for I trust in your words. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us the true bread from heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be nourished, that abiding in him and he in us, we may be filled with the power of endless love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Here at Holy Trinity. And now, Karen. 